Hey everyone, need something to get you going in the morning or the afternoon? Check out TrenchCoffeeCo.com. Trench Coffee originated in Las Vegas and is owned by a combat controller and his wife. Uh, they've been making coffee as a hobby for a couple of years and then decided they enjoyed it so much and they wanted to share the coffee wealth with everyone else. So check them out. They've got 10 different brews. They originally started with the Trench Blend. Um, but they recently started a new blend that uh, is kind of my personal favorite, which is the Brazil Cerrado. I'm probably saying that wrong again, like I do in every single promo, um, but whatever. I'm educated in South Carolina, so you can deal with it. Uh, they also sell, you know, apparel. They sell cold brew kits. They've got holiday packages going on where you can get a mug and some coffee. Uh, their normal bag sizes are 12 ounces. They do have some samplers. So if you wanted to get a handful of sampler packs, you could do that. And if you want to go all in, they definitely have five pound bags that'll keep you stocked for quite some time. Um, but if you go through coffee like I do, because it's so good, five pounds probably won't last you too long. But please go check them out. Uh, they are definitely friends of the podcast and have been for quite some time. And uh, so we want to support them and they're supporting us. Uh, so we don't get anything from it, but please go check them out. Enter the promo code ones ready to get you a discount. And then I know that sometimes they also, every time you buy a, a bag of coffee and use our promo code, they will send a bag down range or at least put some money to the side to pay for sending bags down range. So great company, great people. Jeff and Jerrica are amazing. So go support them. Check them out. Trench Coffee Co. That's trenchcoffeeco.com. Okay. Now it's good. We can, and now, and, and now I'm and happy. Now and now we can start and all that kind of stuff. And I got Maggie down here with her squeaky ball. Wait, perfect. This is what we call being a professional. J-Mag, you went to A&S, man. Welcome back, first of all. Second of all, what happened to A&S? Tell us. What, what did you think <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't go. I no, he, he didn't, he didn't oh, go. He, Oh, I forgot I was, Peach is yeah. wet. Oh, I was trying to say, hey, guys, how have you been? I've missed you. It's good to see your beautiful <laughs> And then face. you said, hey, uh, <laughs> then you were like, hey, Peach is you yeah, if you're not, if, if for everybody that's not tracking, I mean, we were literally sitting on here just BS, and, and then it was like, and then you guys started wanting to talk about real stuff, and I'm like, hey, let's let's actually record and not lose any of this, uh, and then, you know, and now all of a sudden, I'm getting down to business, you know? I know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, get down to business. Oh, uh, Jay Mac, I love you. Right, <laughs> but yes, yes. So I went to A and S uh, and hung out with Trent for a little bit, and the rest of a whole bunch of crows, lieutenant colonels. Um, you know that are all commanders, fifty eighth, sixty eighth. Um, some of those guys, Ivan Ruiz, and, and a bunch of chiefs, more chiefs than than crows. But um, it was good, which is why why it was tolerable. <laughs> which is why it was tolerable. <laughs> Concur. Nice. That's, that's the first note of the night. Right? So just so you guys understand, I told Trent I had a big, I had a big scratch pad, and I'm gonna write down nuggets. And uh, this is the most J Mac thing I've ever heard. And, uh, because hey, give uh, what do they call it? Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank. It's not good to draw a blank. Aaron, fill the blank. Go. Reciprocity. Give credit. Give credit. No, give credit. Give credit. Too. That's what I'm so okay. I'm going okay. to write down in this book I'm writing about all the things I learned from these squirt away NCOs. That's really what I'm saying. <laughs> Did you get that on a different podcast or this one? Because no, I don't think no, it was this one. <laughs> no, Trent, he gave me his Ben one. He said that, so I'm okay. <laughs> That's right. Hit me up at Trent Sieg slash I can't say slash redacted over at Venmo. <laughs> so Peaches, uh, you were at A&S, so the dudes were there, a bunch of chiefs, a bunch of crows. That's why we call crows in a group. We call them a murder because it's terrible to be around. But uh, why, why were you there? Like, what did you go to A&S for? So, um, I mean, I to, to give you the, the birth of it, I don't actually understand completely. Um, I guess, so for everybody that's out there, you guys know that Really, until the podcast, like we weren't really tracking what was going on at Indoc or ANS or anything like that. Like the podcast has forced us to get involved and be in the know and that kind of stuff. But you know, your your average dude on team doesn't know and doesn't really care what is. Well, they care, but they don't really know what is going on back care. in the pipeline. Some of them care for sure, but they're not necessarily um, in depth with. Oh, okay, A and S is this amount of length. Hey, there's SWIC beforehand. Oh, there's a there's an aspect war BMT flight where they receive mentorship and extra PT and extra food and all that kind of stuff. So, 
you know, uh, and so you take all these crows and all these uh, PJ chiefs, and then I was the the alone and unafraid CCT chief, um, checking it out and just kind of observing a couple of days at ANS and seeing what you know any kind of questions that we all had and that kind of stuff. So that's what it was. It was really good, really beneficial. Um, got to watch some grass and gorilla drills, some buddy carries, some wake ups. Um, some some pool sessions and all that kind of stuff. So um, if there was any doubt on whether or not it was still hard, it's obviously not as hard when I as when I went through uh, yeah, because yeah. No, no, because no, no, no. every generation thinks that. But, General uh, Patton ran my indoc. That's how yeah. hard it was. <laughs> it snowed every day in the summertime. <laughs> but I, I will I will say. Uh, some of those pool sessions, I was definitely glad that I was on the deck and not in the water. Um, and actually, while we're talking about this, I, you know how, and I think you said it actually, um, if you're ever out and you see us, like come and say hey to us because we want to, yeah. you know, meet you and stuff yeah. like that. Well, yeah, yeah. so for those of you that are out there, if you're going through the pipeline and you're in ANS, like, <laughs> And you just oh, get man. finished with grass and gorilla drills and buddy cares and you're soaking Hi, wet and stuff like that. You may not want to come up to me or Trent or Aaron or anybody or especially J Mac because this is his third <laughs> round on here. Oh, I'm autographs. And and go in in front of the cadre too and go, who y'all chief peaches? I, I couldn't disagree then, more. <laughs> I think it's awesome. <laughs> I love how they. Yeah. I love how there's no follow on. That's it. Just Ooh, yeah, well, and then just looking at you like. Well, so I mean, because these guys were already sleep deprived, and right. and everybody. So I've got I've got Cadre next to me, and everybody's just like, I, what just happened? And I'm sitting here going like, I'm trying not to crack up because it I was so do. it was so funny. So I did like half ass kind of like as I'm cracking up, going, oh, you guys got some balls on you. <laughs> Hey, that's that all I could come up with. And that happened to me our last phase two. I gave, I gave the ultimatum. I said, burpees or mind benders? Straight position of tension. Mind bender, sir. How'd you come to that conclusion? Sir, one's ready podcast. And I was like, stop. Let the cat out of the bag. That's it. <laughs> that's it. You, you let too many people know. And now that you gave that power away, they know. I mean, just, just, be, just say good guess. Just say good guess. I don't know you. You don't know me. <laughs> but, hey, it's a good segue into like kind of what I want to talk to you guys about a little bit. Right? Are, we're the guests now. Are everybody, the guests? just so everybody yeah. knows, J Mac is the one that no. convened this. Convened this, yeah. Well, like, this I, is one hundred percent. So I was on a long, slow distance run, and I just started. I was yelling at myself, running up a hill, and I just started laughing. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to send the one pretty boys like a five line call for fire, a joke, <laughs> and say that. You know, my was just marked by, you know, Tucson and surrounded by idiots. I want to talk about this stuff. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, fire for effect and circuit breakout. Like, um, so, you know, what I really want to touch on is, like, the power of offices. You know? Oh, 100%. So, so, and I've heard you guys have, like, like I've been, I've been doing it, you did it, you know what I mean? It's just, you're being real. You know what I mean? Because we've seen it over the years. We've all been in it a long time. And it's these people that are repeatedly trying to be somebody they're not. And, I mean, you're why? You know what I mean? Like, don't give an answer you think somebody wants to hear because you think they want to hear it. Be yourself. Man, I have no idea how I have not been kicked out yet. Straight up. You're squirrely. You're really hard Man. to pin down, dude. Like, energetic. sometimes people don't work. Don't know where you are. Like, is he the, yeah, the greased up dude from uh, uh, the deaf guy from <laughs> Family Guy? <laughs> yeah, from Family Guy. I would tell you about like greased up pigs and pigs. What? Hey, J Mac, can you write down a note? Can you write down today's date as the date we got canceled for Trent uh, calling you the greased up deaf midget on the podcast, please? Whoa, no, 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 he was not was, a, a small person. Short, yeah. Yeah. Short, okay. He was just deaf. Trent, yeah, Trent, you're going to get canceled. How is well, Seth MacFarlane not canceled? <laughs> well, because he's a millionaire. Trent, you're you're in a lot of trouble now. Like, I Seth and I have you. the same hair. We I, they can't cancel problem. me. I'm just gonna say you're I'm a son. Problematic. We're good. Yeah, so, Jay Mac, I, I love how you say that though. Like no no kidding. Going back to what you said, being authentic, right? So, um, Aaron knows this because him and I have had several conversations about this, and this is what I love about Aaron, right? And it took me a long time to appreciate it because 
Aaron is what you guys see right here and what you get in the DMs is exactly how he is in person. As in, it's not, it's not a good thing. Listen, he, it's, 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 it's caused some problems. Hold on, fact check box. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, actually, I'm gonna see how many sex I can get. In that box. I concur. But you're right. I mean, so exact. You know, has it caused some problems for him? Absolutely. But yeah. the thing is yeah, that you you know exactly what you're getting, and you also um, you know he's being authentic, right? Whether he's right, wrong, or indifferent, right? Same with me. I, I'm going to say it exactly as I probably have a a different. Well, we already know that I have a different demeanor than Aaron, but like. You know exactly what you're going to get with Aaron. You know exactly what you're getting with me. And you know you're going to get one of the most amazing dry senses of humor from Trent. Like, and it's amazing. Well, you, you both, the sarcasm. Yeah, you and I, I love Trent. And, and Peach and I both also have different perspective on the world because we're looking at every room we walk into like up and out. Yeah. And Aaron, you know, and everything, oh is, everything is I'm a very new <laughs> the best compliment I ever got was when Trent said, he's like, oh, man, you are the biggest one. He almost said it like sad, like because he knew he was bigger than Brian. He knew he was bigger than Peaches. And I walked into his house. He's like, oh, you're the biggest ones ready. <laughs> Debate's over. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, just he's sad about it for about two seconds. Deflated. <laughs> well, it was the only <laughs> thing I didn't know. Anyway, moving on. Go ahead, Trent. Sorry. <laughs> so, so back to that, being true to yourself, okay? This is what I want to listen to support. So when you walk around, people are like, hey, how's your day? Yeah, I don't tell me you're living the dream. You know what I mean? Unless you're, hey, there's some people out there living the dream, correct? Don't correct. Tell me that. Don't. Sure. It's, it's probably not you on an admin day when you wanted to go home at 1 and it's already 3.30 and you're not, you're not, you're not living the dream. Don't say that. No. And, and especially, I, I, so I forget to ask, them, what's off limits? Obviously, no politics. No, no, not yeah, we're not gonna go there. But don't be, don't be scared. Oh, uh, okay, Come on. guess what? Well, I, I, I don't want to get. All right, one's already canceled twice. <laughs> one, yeah, there we go. Uh, Back can we get through. canceled twice? <laughs> check, check. So <laughs> what I'm doing at is trying to I'm trying to do avoid. But what I'm saying is like I'm talking to a lot of people lately. And I'm saying, hey, how's your mental health? And I'm genuinely asking, how is your mental health? Because we have been living in a very divisive society for two years. You know, now regardless whether you're listening to this from a military perspective, if you're currently serving, you want to join, or even the private civilian sector, what have you, right? Or just a regular government employee. That's important nowadays because, like, nobody wants to say, man, this country is more divided now than it has been probably ever. Do you know what I mean? And information travels at the speed of God knows what. So that's an issue when I say, hey, how are you? Oh, I'm good. Everything's fine. Well, are you? Do you tell. You know what I mean? Yep. And, like, I mean, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Uh, man, I, I feel exactly the same. You know what I mean? So I, I always I always like to joke that Dave Chappelle recently came out. And he's like, oh, no. Hey, everybody, I'm being, I'm being dragged on Twitter. That's okay. Twitter's not a real place. you know. And there is a lot of that that I just laugh at, but it's, it's funny to me personally. But it actually is you know, the political environment and stuff like never before. You know, sifting through misinformation and figuring out like the first thing that I get an, uh, that happens when I get an alert on my phone now isn't to be like, oh, look at the news. It's, oh, I got to verify this. I don't even know if this headline's correct. And I wonder if there's some context that I'm missing. And, you know, it just becomes exhausting and it does weigh on your mental health. So people are oftentimes like, well, just don't pay attention to politics. Well, as a citizen, I like to. I like to pay attention to the political environment. And it, it is exhausting. It's been exhausting for two years. I think you hit the nail on the head. And I like the way that you approached it too, by saying, "Hey, how is your mental health? Oh, you're good. That's crazy because this this it feels like the world is burning down. Some days it takes like everybody's take you know taking crazy pills. You know, it feels like I'm the only one in the room that's like, does this not make? Do you guys not see what's going on? Do you guys not see what, what's happening? So, man, I, I feel that. And, and uh, people are like, hey, yeah, people are having a new job. I'm like, it sucks. Uh, it's terrible. Yeah, getting it done. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know I don't saying? know what like, I'm doing. I feel like I'm faking it every day. I don't learning, know what to tell learning you. Learning every day. You know? Yeah. I'm like, Here's my, that's it, every day. But I think the, uh, the authenticity, honesty um, relationship within like an organization. So if I, if I have a, a leader that's not authentic with me and he says, how's your day going? And I know no matter what I say to that person is one in one, in one ear and out the other and they don't actually care. And they're just going to tell me some platitude or some nonsense just to get me to go back to work and do whatever nonsense that they want me to do. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to open myself up to them. I don't care about them. They don't care about me, but as an organization, if we're all authentic with each other and honest, I think when you, when you can create that environment, that's when you get that non-judgmental, authentic conversation 
amongst teammates and leadership and peers and all that other stuff, um, that, that leads to a, a, a healthier individual, which leads to a healthier team. Well, and the crazy thing about it is that to the uninitiated, it might sound like bitching. I literally walked past one of the flight chiefs today. I gave him the pound. I was like, hey, man, you know, missed you at football this morning. What's up? I was giving him, giving him some crap. And he was just like, hey, dude, today was a good one, too. J Mac, it was, man. It was foggy. Coming, it was freezing. Muddy, yeah, muddy. No, it's it's on it's on turf, but it's in like this bowl, right? So you're actually you're you sit down, and it's cold on the field, and the sunrise gets in your face, but it's a nice field. It's turf. I got to be honest, the boys were putting out today too. Putting out. Everybody's wearing, anyway. everybody's wearing double gloves. Just everybody's got double. It's cold. <laughs> it's wet. It's slop. People are slipping. You know, it, it's a ball sport between the the STS folks. So like nobody there is a. a we had one. Olympic athlete, but he was a bobsled guy. He's not necessarily like playing, you know, food. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it, <laughs> no, he was not. He's a, he's a tall Norwegian. Uh, and I don't think Matt is. Anyway, long story short. Um, but I, I saw one of these NCOs. Hey, missed you this morning. And he was like, hey, man. Yeah, I'm just going through some stuff. And I was like, oh, that's, is there anything I can help with? Is it work stuff? Whatever. He's like, nah, it's just crappy. I'm like, well, hey, I love you, man. Like, let's, uh, if you need me, I'm right here. And he's like, thanks. I appreciate that. It'll probably be okay. But that's where our unit is going. Where you can look at somebody and be like, "Oh no, sh- things suck right now. This is terrible." And somebody, somebody legit will look at you and go, "Oh, f- a word? Do you need? Let's get through it then. Like, let's let's do that. That's a good culture." And it's it it might sound like bitching. It's definitely not. It's it's being able to look at your friend and go, "Man, this sucks. I don't know what I'm doing, and I think I'm screwing everything up." And get that good feedback. Yeah. Well, here's another one too for you. Is well, it's the new year, right? So the whole the the new year, new you's going around. So the gyms are busy. Everybody's making resolutions. And, I just threw uh, up a little. Dude, yeah, I, exactly. Good for them. Because, Go ahead. Because, yeah, it. exactly. Because the next person that, well, I'm not going to say because you guys ask me, but I'm like, I don't believe in resolutions. You know what I mean? It's, to me, it's an admission of guilt. It's like saying, J-Mac, you did really good for 10 months in 2021. But in November, December, man, you ate the cupcakes and you chewed the caramels and you didn't work out like you should have. Okay I love because, it's always it's always food with you. It's it's a deep seated uh, food dude, thing. Mental problem. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? So but, but what I'm getting at is like, so I did you did good for ten months, Jay Mac. You know what I mean? But two months you slacked off, let's make a resolution to get back on No. I'm not, that's the mission of guilt. Straight up. Because at the end of the day, resolutions don't work, they don't last, and they're not backed by science. They're just, they're just like masks. You know what I mean? So I love um, it. Let's get us off at you two. We yeah, don't need it. Is that number three? I, 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 what's that? Fact check? Oh, yeah. Hey, that's a CDC set. J Mag didn't say that. The CDC set. So, what I was saying is, everybody, right? Is just set goals. But another thing with the goals, do not shove that smart act into my face anymore. Because that's just saying what the mainstream folks want you to say. So I have, instead of a SMART acronym, I have another acronym people can use for goal setting. You ready for this? Write this one. Actually, Trent, get ready to write this down. Here we go. Trent, write it down. (laughs) It's called D-I-Flint. Discipline. Okay. Hold on. Let's slow it down. I don't have to write that down. (laughs) D-I-S-C-Splint. Splint. Splint. You got it? Okay, good. Get out of bed when the alarm goes on. We got it. Get your yeah. shoes on. I, you guys even put it up there. Set your stuff up the night before. Prep your coffee. Do your stuff. And get and just go. Yeah. No excuses. We've talked about this before. <laughs> Everybody wants to just analyze analysis, paralysis over these goals. and Stop. I, I get it. My, you know, I'm not going to be like, yeah, I'm losing 100 pounds this month. No. Maybe 10. Maybe 5. But you get 100%. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I was. I mean, yes, I I agree. Yes, we are absolutely recording because this is there is there is no way this is uh, not going to go out there. My whoop is uh, telling me that I'm doing an activity. It's not. It's just J Mac talking gave me a freedom <laughs> heart rate of 197. Not a uh, not a Mahomes heart rate not, uh, no, in the last 13 not, seconds. I, no, it, but J Mac, oh, you're you're totally right. Like half the you know I we get it all the time and you would imagine you know what our dms look like do you think i'm ready now what when's a good time for us to go when and we're like well what does your training look like they're like well i'm thinking about starting like guys gals come on like you, you got to get out there like put some time underneath your shoes and then see where it is like see see when you're ready and see what you feel then but you know i think you're right there's a, a lot of you know jocko says discipline means freedom and there's a lot of, of that stuff out there but it's as really as simple as just like getting up and going and doing one of those things that you said you wanted to do. Yeah. 
And, yeah. and it's cool to it's cool to buy the t shirt and black and sticker and say you're gonna do this, you're gonna do that. But let's see some action. That, that's right. what I want. To see. You know what I mean? And you don't know until you put yourself in that situation. And if you fail, if you fail, guess what? What did I have to just say when you guys had him on, right? That dude failed the dog and he didn't mm-hmm. to get back. And now look at these accomplished. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, sure. he's. It's a fear of <laughs> thing. Yeah. Yeah. You just so, it, 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 people people just get inside their own head and then they they start second guessing themselves. They question what you know. Am I what's doing what's right? Not just like with the entire endeavor. Is my training program correct? You know, is there somebody else better? Is this is this little supplement that I'm going to take? Is it going to make me just that much better? It's like, well, guess what? You're not going to be able to take the supplement when you're in the pipeline, or at least during ANS anyway. So, like, you know, but. You're right. You're not, you're not allowed is to. Where it's at. Yeah, you're not allowed to. <laughs> you're not allowed. Not to. allowed you to. Anything. You can do anything once, Peaches. You're gonna have, for legal reasons. This is a joke because you're my chief. But really, you can do anything. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, there's a great supplement out there that Ruiz talked about, and it's actually it's free. Uh, called water. Fact check. Nice. You ready? Fact check. I mean, I was Tom Brady. It looks so good. Minimum Guy hydrogen thing, monoxide. Right? Careful. <laughs> So Jimmy, hey. you did bring, you brought something up. We were talking about it beforehand, and, and I want to let you. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna open this up, and I want you to lob it out to you. But Uh-oh. we're talking about the uh, the difference between NCO leadership and officer leadership. A lot of times, when people are getting ready to cross train, they bring this up to us, and they're like, "Well, how do I set myself apart as a leader?" And you know, the officers, the smart ones, will ask us, "Well, you know, a lot of this feels like NCO leadership. So what am I supposed to be doing? Do you think that there's a difference between officer leadership and NCO leadership?" I'll, I'll uh, counter your question with a question. So if you open up the Webster Dictionary, what does it say about leadership? What's the definition That's, of leadership? Does anybody know? This isn't how podcasts work. But, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> I, mean, we get, I mean, I can look it up real fast. I was, I was going to say, yeah. Hey, Jamie, pull that up. It says, it says ability, that is the definition of leadership. Say that again? And who in the hell, it says ability to lead. That's okay. what it says. So I'm sorry, Mr. Webster, and your subjective opinion on what your definition of leadership is. Let me tell you what it is. Leadership is leadership is leadership. Just as a PJ is a PJ is a PJ across a multiple command. You know, as CCT, 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 but no matter where you are, you know, like Trent SR, doesn't matter where you are, you're still SR, right? So leadership is leadership is leadership at different levels. All you have is different, different authority, different decision making abilities, right? But in my opinion, I granted. A lot of people will tell you like what their opinion of leadership is, and it's just like, wow, I have the ability to, to, to tell people what to do, or I have the ability to accept risk. Oh, Trent raised his hand. Go ahead. I was not yeah. Trent, but go ahead. Thank you, Trent, yeah. Thanks for calling on me. I, I take back everything I said about not platforming JMac earlier, guys. I'll uh, remove my... Anyway, um, what's more important, leadership or influence? Oh. Leadership, hey, leadership, if you're good, good at it, this art and science of leadership is influence. So if you put it here, I'll put it to you like this. If I could draw it up in a circle right now, I would draw a circle and I would have a piece of one. And like I said, you can just scribble in the middle and say leadership is telling people what to do. Or you can do three even circles. One for empowerment, one for empathy, and one for transparency. Because I'm going to empower every single person I work with, I work for, to be better, do better, and take more ownership of what they're doing, right? I'm also at the same time, I'm gonna, like Aaron said, I'm gonna read their, I'm gonna read their body language, and I'm gonna be able to empathize. Hey man, I missed you today, I uh, have no bad, why don't you go home? Why don't you go take care of whatever you need to take care of, don't take leave, don't do any of them, just go home, and call me if you need me, and I will see you in a few days. I'm gonna add them through, and let them know I care genuinely, being authentic, right? And I'm also, my third part of that is full transparency, as much as you can, right? But be fully transparent because I had said this yesterday, a couple days ago, we had a little pro dev session. And I said, you know, today's generation of, of, of young folks that are joining the military or joining the private sector, whatever have you, they are woefully more educated than we were when we joined. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You're having, you're having folks in their, in their mid to late 20s or early 30s joining with multiple bachelors or masters. Oh, yeah. And, and, and they're the A1C that's sitting behind that customer service counter who's pissed off and having a bad day staring at their iPhone and you have no idea what their qualifications are because you didn't take the time to ask them. You yeah, didn't even take worse, the time you just assume. to care. Yeah. Even even worse, now the old guys are like, well, so these young guys, I don't understand. Do you understand that you're woefully mis like misutilizing this resource that you have because you're just stuck in your ways? Like did you even yeah. did you even bother to to see what your talent management looked like yeah. or so kind of so to close that out a little bit with a leadership question there you posed me is like 
I don't care if you're an airman, an NCO, a senior NCO, or you know, an officer, a CGX, or whatever you are, right? You should have a leadership philosophy. I have. I've said that you guys I believe it's my own personal leadership philosophy. I mean, my own personal leadership philosophy, right? And Jump into a baby. Let's go. You guys, you guys. This is me. This is what you can expect. And then if I get off track, you tell me I'm off track. No hard feelings. Humility, vulnerability, right? That's what leadership is. So, I and I don't care what level you're at. Hey, I, because you're like, hey, what's your leadership philosophy? Uh, like the default is, I do as I say, not as I do. Okay, you're an idiot, okay? Right. And you need to go back and, and study your ABCs and do whatever you have to do. But at the end of the day, mine, if you were to say, if I were to sum it up and just my emboldened in the middle of my thing, I'll send this to you guys on Monday when I get to the office. But it's uh, be a good human and do your job. That's summarizes everything because the be a good human place or be a good human part is that's your moral compass you know that's your whatever ethical wow. you have to follow whatever organization you're a part of um your own values your own fears and motivations right but it's also uh, and then the other part is do your job that's it just do your job yep. and oh i'm gonna go give 110 percent today mathematically impossible thank you thank you but you're like that, you're like a cross between David Goggins and Dwight Schrute. <laughs> oh, really? You're gonna give 110 percent? False. I need you to give 98 yeah. percent because 100 percent would kill you. Yeah, while I'm screaming at you, dropping at <laughs> But the the, the 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 you talk about the um the human aspect of it in terms of being a good human, right? That doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes because you 100 percent will make mistakes. I've made yeah. 50 mistakes today, right? Um, yeah. but but it's. Like you're going to, you got to understand that you, one, you can't let it cripple you because, you know, there are severity, uh, you know, varying degrees of the mistakes. But like we're human, we are going to make mistakes. Now the whole being a good human, like, you know, maybe you don't, um, you know, have affairs with, you know, marital affair, extramarital affairs, or maybe you don't steal money, or maybe you don't. Like, well, let's do, not get specifically like, judgy. Yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> I looked, man, I, I looked at my phone for two seconds and I come back and we're talking about extramarital affairs. Like I, I, I thought I had a, an alert coming through and all of a sudden you're telling me that you've never gotten. Oh man. You just you know jumped what, straight almost, to 11 too. You sheesh. like skipped over all the other. Well, I'm, 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 like I was sitting with, here trying to pull it out of my head. I'm like, maybe uh, just start with you don't put your shopping carts back. Don't we have posts? Oh there? my Jeez. gosh. I mean, that's the simple one. <laughs> Now, I'll this tell you what, a, you wanna, this gets you wanna, more reaction than the cheating on your wife thing is the shopping yes. cards. Yeah, he's, because he's, like, the, he's like, Aaron, over the line. I don't want to have to talk about these heavy topics right now. <laughs> but I mean, how much does it tell you about a person when they don't put their shopping cart back? And you you can and see love, them, and you're just like, oh. Uh -huh. You can talk about it every single episode, and it wouldn't matter because it's a It really does. You know it says mean? so yeah. much about you. So much about, oh, well, there's people for that. I don't care if there's people for that. You're a people God. for that. How about that? Thanks. Thanks, J-Mac. And God forbid if you say anything to anybody, you're it, that. That's a microaggression. <laughs> it, it depends we, on we their haircut, from, though. A we certain haircut. From, <laughs> we went from sticks and stones may never... Uh, sticks and stones may uh, break my bones, but words may never hurt me, to words are literally violence. That's <laughs> so, where we are. So, so as an establishment. I can do like, uh, I can do like Stunt or uh, whatever they call it, uh, one of those things that people record and just go up and, and just scream while I'm running across the Walmart parking lot and tell somebody, I identify as a Walmart employee. Let me get this for you. No, no, no. Have you not seen? Okay, then I'm going to introduce some cart, cart narcs on YouTube or Instagram. <laughs> You guys don't know about yeah. cart narcs? Shout out cart narcs. I'm going to put it in this YouTube. So, we're going we're so, to have bing right dude, now. So we're Peaches has an open door up. policy, but if the door is closed, now know. you know what he's doing. I'm yeah, watching cart narcs. I can't believe you guys haven't seen it. <laughs> I love it. It's a wormhole, not a rabbit hole because it's she, in space. We got cart narcs. All right. All right, J-Mac. So this is a question that we get all the time, and some of the old guys, and you're you're an old guy now, so man, man, I feel like I got no time to prepare. I have no idea what you're asking. The, you, the called you called I, this. You called this. Congratulations. I, you know, I sent you a five line as a joke. And, <laughs> well, I didn't expect any aircraft to check in. Guess oh, that's, that's it. Now, now you got a whole stack, baby. <laughs> Guess who's laughing now, Jim? So. Uh, you know, we, we get something all the time, like hashtag make it doc great again. We had AT on AT is a, is a famous dude in the community and everybody's had him as an instructor, as a friend, or you got a story about AT and now he's slaying bad dudes with ISIS. And we love the, the make in dot great again motif. 
very well branded. Um, but something that we do really no kidding want to talk about is like, do you feel like there's there's always the word entitlement, right? Like these young guys are entitled. Do you think that that's a real thing? Like you are you are way in touch with emotional intelligence and your emotional IQ. And, the, you know, those principles, like half, you know, a third of your leadership philosophy is to be empathetic. You know what I mean? To, to be there and be somebody that, that can be trusted. And that's that's way more in line with that, that new breed thinking. So what, what are your thoughts on all of that stuff? I tell you, you're entitled to what you earn. And that's what's wonderful about living in the most free society, capitalist society in America. You know what I mean? Your, your, what you have is, is what you work for. Um, if that make, if that makes sense, and because like we are on this planet for such a short amount of time, and but we get so wrapped up in the minutia of everything else. And if you, uh, and, you know, Dr. Bruce Tuckman, you ever heard of him? He went to the Ohio State. He's the one that came up with the whole. Thanks for saying that. Right. The, the, the forming, norming, storming, performing. He's that dude, right? Never heard of her. So well. Him, How but. did no? He was saying the Ohio State University. Trent, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> yeah. Quit interrupting Jay. Jay Mac is on a roll. Saying, so yeah, so he's the one that came up with this. But if you think about this, and then they added obviously people need to make money and write books. And he came up with that this really mattered, uh, like a journey or something like that. So if you look at it, and like because I had this kind of spiel that I came up with for a residency speech a while back. Again, when I was running, weird. Um, I, and I just look at the average lifespan of like just I'm not I don't know what it is, but I just put 80 years. And if you and if you section off the 20 year segments right you're like 0 to 20 20 to 40 40 60 68 right throughout that time basically you as an individual from from basically 0 to 20 you're forming you're you're building your personality your character you're having your early life experiences you know between 20 and 40 a lot goes on and i think we've chatted about this before it's like maybe you go for your your get married for the first time you have your first kid you go on your first deployment you get this that and the other right for the first time and all of a sudden I, i've met before like at 25 i'm an adult now my prefrontal, my prefrontal cortex is formed i can make long-term decisions whatever dude but what I'm i wish somebody is, would have told me that when i was 25 i wish they would have told me that i was an adult then because i still like, i look back i look back at stuff that i've done and you're totally right and i i think i've said the same thing on a podcast like Dude, I get it. Like, I get that you feel like you're established at 23. You may do some grown up stuff. Your brain isn't even done fully forming. So, you're not even fully mature until then. What are you going to learn about yourself from 25 to 35? I've learned more about myself from 35 to 42 than I have in any other stretch and any other time. And, and I'm still learning every single day. So, I have to assume that I'm going to learn more from 45 to 55 than I did my whole life. Like, and I had, I had no way to conceptualize that as a young man. But, you know, back, back to like when I talk about those sections, right? So it's like you're forming zero to 20. You're just trying to figure out how you fit in this world. And I can't imagine what kids in this in today's society are dealing with. Because, Wild. you know what? I, I, went outside, I went outside from sunrise to sunset. Somebody in the neighborhood, some family fed me. One of my friend's parents fed me. And then when I heard my mom yell, Johnny, at the top of her lungs, I ran home for dinner. And then all I could think about was getting outside the next day. You know what I mean? And I'm to the point, I'm like, yes, I'm kind of a hover parent, admittedly, right? But I'm not even going to let my two kids play out front unless I'm out in the garage to do something. Yeah. How far we have come, right? Mm -hmm. And how dependent we are on these very addictive devices we have. You know, there's like a, a silver lining in them because we can't live without them or, or can we? But you know what I'm saying? So it's like I said, 0 to 20, you're, you're, you're forming storming 20 to 40 and and norming you know what i'm saying because there's lots of people granted i joined the air force 17 years old i just turned 40 by the way i checked off a huge bucket list item my text 40 for 40 push, baby and i slapped that alligator on the golf course booyah so anyway listen um, i mean i've been meaning to talk to you about this ever like absolutely. i knew a guy one time that rolled through a minefield and he shouldn't have done that either and you should not have slapped that that alligator i'm just gonna put this out there J Mac, no more slapping alligators so many people were like, "Why would you do that?" I said, "Why not?" But what is it? You, I mean, you touched him. You he touched a dinosaur. He was in for a battle. <laughs> I would love to read the obituary where it's like, you know, uh, Arizona man uh, killed by alligator on Florida golf course. His last words were, "Oh, you want to fight me, it. Mr. Alligator?" <laughs> Everybody would know it was you. They'd be like, "No, nah, it's just Jay Mackoff." So, don't so go like, don't go slapping an out al- for everybody out there don't go don't slapping an alligator go slapping alligators <laughs> just get to the river i say do what you want place. it's fine i mean you only live once wild card you know what I'm i like it and, and that's where, like if i can show you guys this graphic okay like so like i said i'm back on these 20 year segments right 
So you know, 20 to 40, we're like, yeah, we're, we're storming and, and forming still. Or, or yeah, storming and norming, right? On who we are becoming. And hopefully by the time we're 40 plus, it's performance time. Because ideally we get to 50, 55, 60 maybe. I want to be retired. I don't want to have to work anymore. I want to play God days. I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to be a slave to, I don't want to be a slave to, to the machine. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? And that's really what I'm getting at because there's so, if you really think about it, we have such little time on this planet. And kind of what I write at the top of the bottom of this is like, I write about no regrets. You know I, mean? so I, I live my life because I did what I wanted to do and I was authentic in my decision making, right? And, and how I conducted my life. So, Love you. And, and at the top of the bottom of this, I did it my way. You know, not taking a line from Frank Sinatra, but I'm taking a line from Frank Sinatra. Take that because, line, baby. Because guess what? I'm doing it my way. And, yeah. I, and I had some great feedback there to hit my boss. It's like, you know, certain people that I get in groups, and they're like, what's he going to say next? Okay, I'm not an idiot. I'm a simplistic <laughs> human being, right? Hold on, fact check. That's right, fact I'm check, a, fact check. But what I'm, what I'm saying is like, I'm not going to go in front of a, a general and just, you know, vomit in the mouth. Right. I Here's mean, the thing, though, Jay Mack, is you, doorway, you need that. You need that in your back pocket. That's part of your persona. Yeah, so, why, I mean, and I've had people say it to me too. They're like, "Hey, you know, when we go in this room, you know, there's going to be a lot of hang." Like, "Hey, guys, I'm not going to burn." Like, I, I talk to you a certain way. Like, I'm not going to talk in front of other people, especially people that are like your bosses in that manner. But it's important for you to have that in your your back pocket because it's like nuclear deterrence, right? Yep. You want the other country to be afraid of what you might do, even if they know that it would take a madman to do it. Well, I will sink the ship I'm working on just to kill the captain, my dude. I don't know how you feel about things, but if you're trying to get down, I'll get down to down. I've actually, yeah, thanks. I said that to my commander, and he was like, hey, let's just pump the brakes, Aaron. Uh, we don't need all that right now because I'm the captain. And I was like, I'm just saying, sir, that's what I'm about to do. Well, so you're <laughs> lucky like, I like you then because uh, the ship ain't going down today. And by the way, I don't have enough good things to say about him. I can't, I, I really don't. Like, I don't want to gush over my commander on here, but I thank goodness Peaches isn't here to have to hear this, but. Man, the, the culture and the unit that we're working in right now, and it's because all these things that we're talking about, right? It's pushing that accountability down. It's that, it's that being empathetic. The commander yesterday was like, hey, I want everybody to get released. And uh, we're a little bit early on a Thursday. You know why he did that? Because it was sunny out in Washington, and that never happens. What? The, fo the fog what? finally broke yesterday. You could see the mountain, and every two days in a row now, you could see the mountain. It hasn't been foggy. He was like, y'all need to get out. He was like, stop what you're doing. You know, you release your supervisors. Y'all need to go get some vitamin D in your life. And that was the email Thanks. that came out from the commander. Like think, about, think about England. Some of the best days yep. you ever had. Sitting around the room right after lunch, just one in the afternoon. Right. What are you guys doing? Go home. Go home. It's go home. It, it finally got sunny out. Get out of here, and, right? And everybody now. out there that's like, oh my goodness, you sent people home before the duty day ended. <gasps> Shame on you. No, because guess what? I've said it once, I've said it like a million times. Like that the military is gonna recoup that time. They will. Oh, yeah. Or oh, or, yeah. even, or even on the, on the private sector. That time will be recouped. You will have a project oh, yeah. that you have more that you have to sacrifice that valuable time with your family that you're not thinking about. And, Speaking of yeah. kind of the same thing, can we go back to the the entitled thing for a second? Yeah, yeah. Because I got something I want to say, which is obviously very important to the Let's podcast. Go. Did you raise your hand? Did you, did I, just, hand? just a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> Name's Trent. Uh, thanks for calling on me. Second question of the day. Um, Long time so, listener, first time question asker. <laughs> I felt like I hadn't earned, when I was new, right? It didn't take long for me to figure out what the generations before me had done to get me to my starting place in my career, if that makes sense. So for probably 15, 16 years of my career, I felt like I owed not only the Air Force, but the previous generation something back uh, before I felt like I wasn't in a deficit anymore. And so we can complain all we want about how well we've set up this current generation for success, but all I ask of them is to recognize it at some point, and you can't expect them to recognize it when they're brand new. Just like... No. And I don't like to like compare them to my children, but like just like I, I can't expect my kids to understand how much better they have it than I did when I was a child. Yeah, like these people yeah. are brand new to this environment, and we come at them more like, "Oh, you're so entitled! Like you have all these things, and we set you up for success. What's wrong with you?" Later on in their career, they probably will understand how far along we took them before they even started, and have that uh, deficit mindset and trying to pay it back. At least that's how I viewed, you know, the majority of my career was trying to get even. And then pay that debt to all the generations that came before me. 
Well, and that's the other thing that I'm going to put out there, and I'm going to put this out to the world. We're going to make our own little reel for this one. But for all of the guys, like, there's a bunch of retired dudes. Like, retired dudes having access to, like, uh, Instagram accounts and Facebook accounts is good in some ways, and it's bad in some ways, too, right? Um, and one of the reasons it's bad is there's a lot of, lot of hot language and a lot of hot takes talking about what's going on in the career field, what's going on in the community, what's going on with ANS and all this other stuff. And they got all these hot takes, and they're like, oh. You know, I've heard some some pretty, you know, pointed, some pretty pointed, you know, language at, like, where we are as a community. And I reminded, you know, a couple of people that I talked to in the DMs. I'm like, hey, if we're where if you don't like where we are today, it's because of you. Like, this isn't happening to you. You laid the bricks to get to where we are today. If we have a culture problem. The culture problem didn't just start. It's not a generational thing. Like the bricks were were laid for this. The the ball was moved down the road. So, you know, I'm the last person to be like, oh, these new guys are entitled or this new crop of guys and gals isn't as hard. Like all these other things. I'm always like, hey, it's, it's always going to be a different optic. You know, P, you know, um, Vietnam PJs will tell you, well, hey, you know, we didn't we didn't even need all this fancy electronic stuff. We did everything off map and compass. Well, I got it. But GPSs are a thing now. You know what I mean? So I'm going to I'm going to use GPS because it's, it's pretty valuable as a tool. Yeah, but you're still, gonna, you're still going to know the baseline of how to do this because GPS sure. may not always be there and that kind of stuff. But yes, utilize yep. the tools that you're given. Um, and I guess to to and I don't know what you guys said while, while I stepped away, but. Um, we do have a question for you when you're ready. We, we'll, we talked mad trash. We did. Yeah, that's fine. Just, just, we got a couple just, questions. Just re- rewind it. That's okay. <laughs> for a read ahead, just think about um, uh, vaccine mandates and the trucker con- uh, convoy in Iowa right now. Those are the two things we need your input on. Anyway, we go just, ahead. We just took a, yeah, we took a left. Before. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but, like, so, yeah, 100% right, you know, entitlement and that kind of stuff. Um with that said, like I am extremely impressed with some of the new dudes that we have received. At least Aaron and I have received at the unit. Like, I, very, very impressed with some of those guys. Now, is that due to their personality, their level of training, the mentorships that they have received, and that kind of stuff? Probably all of the above. But, um, like, man, I, I am thoroughly impressed with some of the dues that we have received at the unit. So I don't think all is lost or, you know, um, but it's definitely something oh, to be and conscious and about. And you're right. Not all is lost, but the same, at the same time, the four of us sitting here having a conversation, we all grew up and we were all brought up in a different air force and a different yeah. society than these, these people, these folks are today. Right. And like, I don't know about you guys, but I was humbled early and humbled often. And I was humbled by you, Jay, man. Like, I, I, I would tell that story, but I'll cry. Likewise. <laughs> and the same thing is like, when people tell me, man, why are you so brash sometimes? And I say, well, I was raised by wolves. And I name a couple of the people who raised me. And they're like, ooh, I'm glad you survived. You know what I mean? But it's like, back when, like, the, the hazing, can you, you can't even, you can't even say the word publicly now without being like, you know what I mean? Like shunt. And it's just like one of those that that's I came to my unit and I was just I was nine feet tall, you know, three hundred pound linebacker when I showed up at my that first unit my beret. Man, they walked I was deep bopping across the parking lot with an eighty inch chest of cool dude and they're just like, Give me that hat. You haven't heard Looking me like yet. a fire hydrant. I I pretty I'm pretty sure I earned it. You know what I mean? You know, and like the next two hours of my life were like the worst two hours. Worst I wanted to go back to Indo. You know what I mean? And how they they just belittled me into, hey, now you're going to be one of us, and now you're going to earn this hat back. And I've talked about it before, but, like, I would say I agree with you, Peaches. There are some great dudes and, and great gals out there. But at the same time, there's also some dudes that we could probably make Hazen great again and, and change them. I can't wait to start that. Uh, that hashtag is going to have Make Hazen great again. Make but Hazen it, bring, great it brings... It brings but it brings up a great, a great question, right? Like, like, how do you, how do you know kidding? How do you, you know, using your leadership of, of TEE, which is by the way, you're a golfer. You should call it tee it up for leadership with Jan. But yeah. how do we, how do we use your leadership philosophy in order to reach that younger generation? Maybe even somebody that you think is harder to reach than most. Maybe somebody that you don't necessarily agree with. Pause what you're doing. Get in the moment and have the conversation. You know what I mean? We are all running a million miles an hour every single day to accomplish these taskers that we're never going to be able to accomplish in a day, in a week, in a month, right? Prioritize and make professional development and make training our replacements 
a priority. Do you know what I mean? That always needs to be a five meter target. Not, hey, we're going to do it once a quarter. Oh, okay, not going to get through this quarter. We'll get to it next quarter. Make it a priority and be authentic and genuine about it. Do you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Make people a priority again? Is yeah. that that's probably the hashtag we're going to go with, not the other one. Invest, yeah, invest in human capital, not just we. You know, everybody says all these buzzwords, but that's really what it is: invest in human beings, because there's no power like human power. You know. But I mean, that just goes that goes right back to the soft truths, right? Yes. Like people are more important than hardware. Like they really are. They're the ones that make it happen. Like, hey, yeah, that's great. We got some phenomenal planes. We got some phenomenal programs with ATAC and, and all that kind of stuff. But really, what makes the mission happen and what makes the mission successful is people. Yep. And the, and the equipment works. And we have it. And we have the, the kind of the science behind it and why it works. And we know from, from our AARs, but at the same time, we know that works. But it's like we spend years and years getting it to work. And before it's even fully programmed to be a program or record we're like what's next and then what's next and then what's next and what's next and you feel like you can never keep up and it has to be what's the latest and greatest so we're not really we're not mastering the basics we're like uh mastering the trial of the basics and then jumping straight to advanced and i'm mastering the you know what i'm saying so that we're just doing this vicious leapfrog becomes this the cyclic uh disaster if you will if that makes sense. I don't know. You guys have to back me up. I don't have to back you up for anything, J Mac. No, <laughs> I definitely get what you mean. Like, it definitely feels like you're playing, you know, from, from behind the entire time. Like, t- that sense of urgency is always there. You always feel that momentum, and, and you can feel it slipping away. You can feel when momentum is kind of leaving your camp and going over to the other guy's camp, and it's, it's definitely not a good feeling. But so, for you, and this, this kind of folds into a question I wanted to ask you is what you, where do you think the rescue community is going? And what I want you to answer is what are you excited about? Because there's a lot of there's a lot of feelings about, you know, the next year's war and it's no more GWAT and we're we're coming back and then you've got Ukraine and the Russia situation and some other things that are popping off. What are you excited about for the rescue community? Because we talk about it a lot. I feel like we're super connected to it. But from a guy that's in the community in a very important position leading and molding those young leaders, what are you getting them ready for? Well truth be told I'm I'm not in that community. Oh I'm in the community. But my my job, I'm out of it. I'm not at the unit. I'm up at the wing up at the headquarters, standing up. I know, this, baby, but you know, man, you know I don't know I'm if at. you know this, but that's where the orders come from is headquarters. If I, it, uh, it, it P- Chief Peaches, about uh, back me up on this one. I'm, I'm relatively sure. It's that's not wrong. It's okay. not wrong. No, no with them, and it's just only this new agile combat type buzz that's, that's taking over the Air Force, right? Um, you can read about it, CSAP just to sign a whole um, directive on it. So I'm, I'm up at the A staff now, as, and I'm working future plans. And just developing, you know, operating instructions and procedures, SPs, things like that, to to facilitate this kind of lead wing construct and where we're going to go in the future, um, you know, cross command employment. Because right now, we just ended, we just got out of a twenty year war. So it is what's next. So it's almost like we're just we're hitting a giant reset phase and going into a, a giant reconstitution phase. But at the same time, there's fodder going on over there and fodder going on over there. So it's like we have to adjust focus for now and just kind of enjoy it. You know, so like if you ask me what I'm excited about, enjoy. I'm enjoying this lull. I'm enjoying the lull to focus on us and focus on, like I alluded to, training our replacements and, and making better human beings and, and mastering, remastering those basic skills that we couldn't keep up with because the tempo was so hot. Right. Yeah. But I mean, that's, I, well, I'm sorry. Go for it. No, no, go ahead. I, I think that, the reset and the reconstitution phase is important. And I think I'm pretty sure that's what you like. You hit that, but um, it's almost that kind of help refocus. Yeah. We've been going hard for 20, 20 years or whatever um, at multiple different fronts. Now, while we have this lull, now is a good time to reset, reconstitute, refit, get ourselves healthy again, take care of our people the best we possibly can and then be ready for whatever happens next. Yeah. And, and focus on us because whether yeah. we want to admit it or not, whether or not we want to admit it or not, like we're all broken in our own way. You know what I mean? Whether it's whether it's physical, whether it's mental, or what we just experienced for the past twenty plus years that we've been in mix. Um, but it's sometimes it's, it's wonderful, and I'll admit, man, just to go talk to a third person 
and you but, just sit down and yeah. say, hey, I want to talk about this because you're not a teammate, you're not a family member, you know what I mean? And we have those assets available in our community, but I know other communities have them or in the civilian world, right? Sit down and talk to somebody. It's amazing how good it feels to just offload, you know what I mean? Yeah, it and it's... Up, it opens up some storage and you clean your, you know, yeah. closet. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and I, I by that, I mean, it sounds very um, self-centered. And that's, what I, that's not what I mean. Uh, I, I mean, it like, hey, yeah, take care of yourself. But you also got to be able to take care of others. And I think that's uh, another point that you make in terms of talking to people. Because, you know, if you need something and you come talk to me, it's not only helping you, but it's helping me. So, like, sometimes I think that we, uh, a lot of the culture, especially on on social media and stuff like that, but a lot of the culture is like, hey, me first, everybody else second. But like, I think there's a lot of health in, hey, I'm going to, I, I know that I've got a, whatever going on, but like, you also need me. By helping you, I'm also helping me. I'm also helping yeah. heal myself. Like, I, if, if you haven't, not you guys, but like, if you're out there and you have never helped, like genuinely put yourself out of place to help somebody else, whether it's like you're going on the highway and somebody's got a flat tire, um, they may not need your help, but you get out and you help them or, you know, <laughs> help an old lady cross the street kind of thing. Like putting yourself out of the way, like to help somebody else also helps you. I think we've got to get out of this. Hey, it, it's me first, everybody else second. I got to take care of my mental health. Yeah, you do. But you also can do that by helping other people. It's not all about you. That's why I say, yeah. No, go ahead. You got it. I don't believe in altruism because, yeah, just, I'll, I'll, I just want to say it and I'll call you. We should always end with Trent, J Mac. You should always let, like, you should go first and then Trent's going to say something like Dark Cloud. <laughs> But no, go ahead. That's her. I don't believe it. All, I, I believe you left off it. I don't believe in altruism. That was the whole point. I don't believe in altruism because if I do anything that is perceived as selfless for somebody else, it's not true because I get something out of every, especially out of every positive interaction I have with another human being. So I think altruism is a myth. It's not because at least for me, it's impossible for me to do something nice or good for somebody else. And I'd be lying to myself if I said I didn't get something out of that as well, if not more than what the other person got. Mm -hmm. But also pay attention to your surroundings, okay? Because everybody is everybody's speeding nowadays, and like <laughs> we're running around. And oh, you're focusing every, on the car change, no, car tire every, change there. Listen, and everybody's faces are covered, and everybody's pissed off and disgruntled in a bad mood, and, and stay away from me because you might have cooties. That's fine. I got my COVID merit badge a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and then I put on my sash, but like you did the thing so is, good. like, I'm so proud of you. like You're the COVID identify, kid. no, just identify what's going on because <laughs> well, you the three myself, years to flatten the curve. It was like it was like a, a month ago. I was at Home Depot. And I go to the, the self checkout, right, and I just I see this old lady with a cart, and she had like plant food and a plant, and then she's in a cart waiting to self checkout, and I watched a bunch of people just buzz by her, like three or four people. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, she wants to use the self checkout, but she doesn't know how. Mm -hmm. And she's not going to ask him. Like, so I, I scoot around and I said, ma'am, are you in line? And I, yes. I just have a conversation. I, I check out. I go, you need help checking out? <laughs> oh, I don't know how to use that thing. And I said, here. And I just, I did it for her. And I was like, do you have a card? She goes, oh, well, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it goes here. I mean, cutest to lady, like oh, adopt a grandma, right? But like how many people <laughs> just buzzed by her? You know? oh my God, I want you to start the yeah. adopt a grandma program. Hashtag, it can be your I'm legacy. Yeah, please write that down. <laughs> We're also going to publish. I'm going to put it in the notes, but every note that you've written down, I'm publishing. When we make this post, I need you to send me a picture of what you've written down because I'm okay. publishing it all. Yes. It's got to be gold. It's got to be I gold. Can't, I don't know if I can do that. Uh, <laughs> I'll black out. We already got canceled thanks to your, your talks on COVID. We, I've, we I've got my social. The, <laughs> the phallic got, symbols got, all over your paper. Got, Go yeah, follow got, us on Rumble, everybody. I got angry about politics. Uh, <laughs> So, just right. Yeah, just like <laughs> J Mac, put the crayon down. Don't I'm not dumb. It. I'm simplistic. <laughs> uh, so I was at this like I said this program the other day, and I was so pumped, and I got asked this question because obviously we talk about we joke around, but like what we're seeing nowadays, like come through, and it's like it's fifty fifty. You got your rock sure. stars, just like it was when we went, and then you have some people that just why did you even apply, right? Um, I'm not saying to those folks that are like asking themselves why they ever applied, hey, 
you have a chance. You know what I mean? Just keep trying. That's what's great about this the new world we live in. But it's like I was asked a question like on one of those like online um, surveys, right? And I was so pumped because it was, would you rather hire, um, like if you're in a hiring mall, would you rather hire somebody who's incredibly capable, incredibly personable, or the third one was, it literally said option three. And I was like looking around the room and I was like, I went option three just because I wanted to have that conversation. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then of course I dropped my lunch on the floor and I had to walk out cleaning it. So as I came back, I was cleaning it. How is that relevant to the story, J Mac? Well, Wait a I'm second. Kidding. Wait a second. Wait a second. So, okay. You yeah, know what? I'm never mind. I'm okay. A, so you, you dropped the lunch. Okay. Well, and I, well, it's, yeah, five second rule. I still ate it. That's okay. The CDC says it's uh, 10 seconds from now. Is it 10 now? <laughs> no, that's a, well, it's only, a joke. Only for from Mexican internet. food. Yeah, well, it is. Well, if you have age, you'll have to stay home for five days, too. But, um,. <laughs> Why is that so hard? I just don't know. Why was it? You guys, it's been, this podcast has been great. I just want to say thanks to everybody out there that followed the, uh, follow the Instagram. It's a shame that we're gone. It's been, now. It's been a real ride. fun time. It's been a real fun ride. And, and don't forget it's been to wear great. your seatbelts. I'm not editing any of this out. I'm not editing forget, any yeah. of this out. Don't forget to wear your seatbelts when you're walking your dogs, too. She, she said that. What Can I was getting at is yeah. it, 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 it ties into like the skill versus will. That's where I really want to go with that. Maybe I should have let in with that, right? Because it would have helped. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, I want. We all want this highly skilled individual who's, who has the will to succeed. Yeah. But you know what I mean? So it's like, let's hire that incredibly capable person. But maybe he's a total douchebag. And guess what? Yeah. We have those people in our community. Incredi I'm right here, Jay. I can hear you. you. You try to get the podcast canceled, and then you call me out. I can see you. We're on Zoom. <laughs> So, so I got a question for you, that J. Mac. I'm sorry, I'm not capable. That's not true. J. Mac, I got a, <laughs> I got a question for you. I'm, I'm do you writing. Go ahead. Do you prefer, like, what do you value more, will or skill? So I, I picked option three because I want the hybrid. You know what I mean? Because the sweet yeah. spot is there. You know what I mean? All right. Well, here's. Well, okay. So let me put, let me paint the picture for you. Then, do you want the person that? Um, can want you know call it a, a, J, a JTAC qualified controller right can sprint up the hill right and he's the first one up the hill um but he's mediocre on the mic or do you want the one that is call it last or in the you know lower third if you will um gets up to the mountain but the he is you know magic on the mic kind of person I want the, the guy that can call an effective fires, but at the same time, when I get shot, he can carry me the two miles down the mountain back home. And can we call him Magic and, Mike? And, and look my wife in the eye and go, you know what, hey, I made it happen on the mountain, but I also fixed your husband and carried him home. That's the guy I want. Does that make sense? Well, are we talking about yeah. skill or potential? It makes sense that you refuse to answer any of the questions in these thought experiments and keep making up your own question as opposed to exploring it like a good guess. That's but what all of our, that, no, no, all of our guests only answer the questions that they want to answer. They actually make up no. their own questions who was, on a regular who basis. Was the, who was the I first person that said what chief? The chief, the chief was like, hey, uh, I'm going to answer the question I wish no, you would ask. It was General Webb, the AUTC oh, was. commander, was like, yeah, My cool favorite. story, kid. Anyway. My favorite answer, or my favorite guest answer of all time, and J Mac, we tell the story every time with you two. We're like, "Hey, when we get done, I don't think I want to be done now. Just throw the frag out." I got excited. <laughs> well, actually, no, I'm good. Trent called me up and then answered his question about what kind of okay. controller. I, I didn't. I just jumped on the bandwagon. I don't call people out. I jump on bandwagons. Okay, the wagon no, was already never, there. He never. Trent isn't an instigator. He just pours. He pours fuel on the fire. Yeah. He is the I, joker. I'm the gas man. The He's so the gas no man. Name, no, no names, but the controller I don't want, or maybe I do want him because he probably became a really good controller. I think he did. Is the individual that was in my paramedic class that like got failed out of paramedic, but he turned and on somebody's neck and went and became a controller. Maybe he's really good on the mic, Peach. No okay. I just, I hope I don't get injured, I guess. But. <laughs> <laughs> His name starts with an S. I'm just kidding. No, I, was, I was sitting here going like, I was automatically going, all right, who's S? Who's S? I just <laughs> see the wheels turn. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's exactly what it did. <laughs> I absolutely love it. So, uh, you know, J Mac, have you ever seen the video of Will Smith talking about talent and skill? It's, it's a lot of what we're talking about here. Oh, you know, man. the difference between talent and skill. 
Um, I gotta show you. I gotta show you my guy. It's my mic. Okay. I'll do it. Speaking of cheating wait. on your spouse, I can't wait. <laughs> um, so what about what about those hard times? And we've talked about leadership is leadership is leadership. But there are times when you're a crow and people need to prepare for this. Like our our you know, uh, listeners and people that are preparing to get in an aspect where they ask us this all the time. But what about when you need to hold that line that is unpopular? When you, when do you, when you're enforcing something that is you know, policy that you can't control, but it's vetted policy and you need to make it your own in order to be that authentic leader. Cause that's what we're talking about. Authenticity, right? Uh, authenticity, right? Yep. Yep. Um, how do you walk that line? How do you remain authentic with something you don't necessarily agree with? Uh, is that a question? Oh yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just want to make sure it's right. So it, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's easy. Yeah, well, I'm not trying to be a super smart ass here, but expectation management, another buzzword, right? You have you have to set the baseline. And that's what I tell a lot of people. You know, they're like, well, hey, you went from, you basically went from bro to crow. So what's the difference? The difference is like, I'm still the same person. I'm not a sellout. I didn't, I, I'm not, I didn't like go away to, to school and come back as some mystical creature with, you know that anyways you know what i'm getting at but like hey the stand, standards <laughs> yeah, I, standards. I, I don't right? but i don't need to keep going yeah you, know, you just you can just imagine so standards are standards and and objective rules and regulations are objective for that reason they're black and white for a reason so it's like you can't cross that threshold and it, it's one of those things like you can be my best friend in the whole world but like at the end of the day on friday when you say don't drink and drive this weekend you know and uber's cheaper than a dui like my hands are tied. If you get, if my hands are tied. If the cops call me and tell me that you're in jail because you, you, you got a no crap. Mm-hmm. So that type of deal, right? So you have to, you have to get in front of that and set those expectations. Everybody does, and you have to be <laughs> humble enough to accept them and not be like, "Come on, but we're bros. You're gonna get me out of this, or maybe that doesn't apply to me." No, okay. And that's back to that. Where's your moral compass? You know what I mean? Yep. Or, or, or what are the ethics that you know you raised your right hand and you signed up for, right? Can we call it moral GPS from now on? Because uh, nobody I, knows I, what a compass is. <laughs> yeah, just I, I'm it. actually I'm gonna put that I'm putting that right under card marks. <laughs> Dude, seriously, card narcs. It, it's hilarious. Is it, is it is it moral or morale? Just kidding. <laughs> you know what? For all intensive purposes, we're gonna nip this one in the butt. Uh, so uh, oh, you guys don't dude. know, but he's J Mac knows the crow that I'm talking about. But there was a crow and I. Uh, J Mac that worked at the 38th and then he worked with me at Curlin. But we used to have the incorrectly used sayings wall. And every once in a while, he'll, he'll like hear one in a brief and he'll text me. But it's like, hey, for all intensive purposes, you know, a bird in the hand is worth a bush worth of information. Like, you know, anytime somebody screws something like that up, he, he automatically texts me. And I love it. No comment. <laughs> all right. Oh. So, J Mac. Um, I, I want to hit you. I, I want to put you on the spot. We're going to do a lightning round. And I want, I'll give you like two or three seconds to think about it. But biggest failures that a young leader can make that you want our people, you want people listening to us right now. These are the three. And whether they want to be a crow, whether they want to be a stow, whether they want to be a PJ, man, you, you've done all of those things. Like you've been a leader at the highest level. So young leaders, three mistakes. What should they avoid? Go. Um. Saying one thing and doing another. Oh, yes. That's, that's like, that'll crush because relationships are built on trust. That's the foundation. You know what I mean? If I go in and I say, I got your back and I've heard your trust and I go ahead and, and the boss is in front of us and I say something else or do something else, done. You, no second chances. I'm Number right one. Off. Number, Number one. one. Rule, rules for me, not for me. Not going to fly. Biggest mistake. Number two. Me. Yep. Um, ooh, these are tough, man. Lightning rounds. Can we just take turns or am I on the, I'm on the hop? You're on the hook. The hot seat. Hot seat. Hot round. Hot round. I just do what I'm told. I don't know what we're talking about. Yeah, you can keep saying it. I don't understand. You can keep saying hot round. Just go stand over there. All right, J-Man. Number two. Number two. We're all guilty of this, right? But I wear my emotions for a reason. I wear them on my shoulders. It's obvious that I tell you. What? You? Shocker. But what I'm saying... What I'm saying is, like, I've learned as I've um, matured. I don't know. Do we mature as, as men or do we just get older? I think you do. I, I think you, even you, J-Mac. You, yeah. you, are, you are a you're a grown man now. I heard that you have a diversified 401k. I was very impressed. Well, interesting. But what I'm saying is, like, 
no matter what you do, if you're going to come in and, um, and you're trying to take care of people, and it's like we all have a lot going on, you have to stop for a second and just be, be in the moment. Live in the moment, you know what I mean? And not, not drag everybody else through what you're going through, if that makes sense. Number two. It does. So be in the because, moment. Because be present. You're, Number you're, two. You're, 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 you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle, especially some of these young, young folks. As you're going to struggle. You're going to get pissed off with a lot of people. Um, Number three is uh, um, the knee jerks. I have to say it. I have to go there. Okay. You what know, do you mean by knee jerks? I think you, I know what you mean, but what do you mean? It, what I mean is the folks out there is it's like when you're in a situation and you're presented with a problem set, listen. So that's an extra third. That's your third lesson there is to listen. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I think we all are just the personality of who we are in this community, but we're just quick to judge. You know what I mean? Okay. But just listen, because that's going to help. So okay. trust, be present, listen. I guess we can put that. <laughs> Not the lighting around stressful. Jesus. It is stressful because you don't know what's going on. You're on the hot seat, baby. Well, he's got. we got one more for you. Trent's got one oh, for you. No, I, I told you I was going to talk about this today on the text earlier that was highly appropriate between all of us. Uh, this afternoon, Highly as we were talking about what we were talking no, about. There was no reason for federal agents to have to look at any of our phones. Dude, my NSA agent is Called the most you. entertained person <laughs> on this planet. I'm just saying. Fire memes. You're he's welcome. The most popular guy. Yeah, he's the most yeah. popular guy in the group chat he where they sh- share all the memes. He shares all of my content. It's amazing. So, uh, I, I was going to say, on the on the vein of, of leadership, I know, uh, I, I just want to say, like, the golden rule thing for me is stupid. And what I mean by that is it, the golden rule is a treat others the way you would like to be treated. And as a leader, I found that that is not always the case as a leader and as a husband and as a person, really. Um, because the way that I like to be treated is a lot different than the way other people want to be treated, right? So it goes back to everything that J-Mac is saying about listening and not projecting your personal experience onto somebody else and expecting them to react to stimuli or instruction the exact same way that you would. And I think that's a huge um, uh, pit that we can fall in as, as leaders and as teammates is expecting that everybody else's experiences are similar to our own and that, uh, and expecting them, like we hold that, we hold them to the same standard to react the way that we would in certain situations. And if you do not know those people and if you don't know kind of where they come from and how they, re- how they work, uh, between the ears, uh, then you're, you're never going to get past that. And you're just going to go your whole life with that knee jerk reaction being like, this guy is stupid. Or you know, he's going to think you're stupid for reacting the way that you react without that communication, that trust, and that foundation uh, to move forward and be effective. That's it. That's wasn't really a question. Not, no, that was, that was, that was yeah, more of a, a statement. Very deep statement. That was a very deep yeah. statement. I appreciate that. But, but, I, but I get what you're saying, though. Is like you know when when people say the golden rule, like treat other people how you want to be treated. It doesn't mean expect from them what you would expect for yourself or from them. You know. Being, uh, you know, being upset that the world is unfair to you is like you not eating the lion and then being upset when the lion eats you. That's not fairness. That's how the world works. You know what I mean? So when we talk about the golden rule, really the golden rule is if, if I was going to be wrong, here is, here is the trust, the respect, and the grace that I would expect from someone else. I want to treat people like that. I want to I want to take an extra second, like J-Mac was saying, to step away from myself and really be there in the moment. Be there because I'm there for that person and go, wait a second. I may not react like this. I may not expect myself to react like this, but this is how this person needs help. And I need to be able to drop in and be present in that moment to be authentic with my leadership and to be there really. And there's no altruism. I'm not doing it. It's going to feel good when you help somebody, right? But really the golden rule is I want to be there for that person so that they can go on and then they can pay it forward and they can be there for that. Next person. So I, I, I agree with what you're saying. I, in the first half, not gonna lie, you didn't have me. You were like, I don't like the golden rule, but Trent, you sold me by the end of it. You're you're a savant, what can I say? You have the same look the first half of all my rants. You're like, I don't know where he's this dude is I thought he was kinda smart and I think he's stupid. And that's a me problem because because I, I show that on my face. I need to do a better job of hiding it until the end because I always agree with you. Yeah. J Mac, we're gonna wrap it right now, yeah, that's, right? Yeah, that's good. But yeah, I signed on for thirty minutes. You did, you did. But like I tell you, this is your third time on. Um, like always, you're always welcome because one, you're entertaining. Two, you're a good freaking dude. So we love having you on. And Man, you, like, I'll, I'll I'll put a dollar in the swear jar, J Mac. You give a fuck. 
<laughs> you actually care about people uh, that are coming in, people that are in. You care, J Mac, and I, I, I'll be like, I'll be the first person. You have not changed since you were no. staff sergeant, senior airman, J Mac, since you were tech sergeant, J Mac, my team sergeant, since you went over to being a crow. Like you care, and you've always cared, and that's why you you can tell us when the ones ready podcast needs can be. Do we ever record on Friday night, boys? No, no, we do not. Not unless J Mac calls, baby. Not unless J Mac. Not calls. unless there's a fire mission that comes in from J Mac, and then we hop on. The text was funny. Come on, I was like, we, I was laughing when I was running. Like, and, and, and what happened? Like, and it like, came on. Like yeah, yeah. like we're recording with J Mac again. It's a scheduling issue at this uh, point, baby. Yeah, J Mac needs it. <laughs> so again, dude, thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it. And for all the of those out there that we're listening or watching, don't cancel us. Uh, we're actually good dudes, somewhat. So um, <laughs> don't feel like you got to cancel. Eh, questionable and just just remember there's there's like a bunch of us you can cancel one of us but the rest of us are going to keep doing the project yeah. and i i think we know who's getting canceled we know which one's getting canceled. <laughs> so, so i'm gonna i'm gonna leave i'm gonna leave you guys with this too it's like because you brought up most of that, uh, and, and that uh, presentation that he gets right in the video and that's one of my examples i have written out here for like a true like what is authenticity right and if you guys watch the movie that he did that uh, pursuit of happiness and there's that one scene where he is just, he spends the night in jail and he's running to the interview on Wall Street and he's just looking disheveled and he's got to paint all over the place and all this stuff. Like, we're not going to go through the whole scene, but do yourself a solid, everybody out there, watch that scene and be that, be him in that scene. You know what I mean? Like, no excuses. He owned up to everything. He listened to questions. He paused to be in the moment and he was truthful as all hell. And this is a microphone. <laughs> And there you have it. Up, J-Mac. There it is. There you go. And that, and now I'm gonna end it. Please like, subscribe if you feel so inclined. Uh, follow J-Mac at at uh, cro underscore mc. Right? Yeah. Yep. Correctly. So um, yeah, Only thanks for joining us. Just talk to people. I know, and yeah, people want to hear. Coming on, man. Appreciate uh, you, guys, sir. Thank you, guys. Later. Appreciate it. Later.